Hey everybody, welcome to Gall Hacks. I'm Jeff Schantz, and in this series we're going to take a look at some tips and tricks that'll hopefully make your life just a little easier when you're working in Unix on the Gall network, and perhaps help you to work smarter and more efficiently at the Unix command line. Believe it or not, Unix and Linux are used all over the place in industry, so there's definite value in becoming proficient with them. Now, obviously, this series is geared towards computer science students at the University of Western Ontario. But for anyone that might be watching who does not fit that description, you might still find the hacks we will cover useful, as they're going to pertain mostly to Unix in general rather than to our specific network. One thing to note, though, is that by default, the shell used on our network is TC shell, so many hacks that I'll cover will pertain to that shell. All right, let's get started on hack zero. Now, admittedly, this hack is not very interesting, but there is some setup we need to do now so that we can get to the good stuff later. And besides, it'll only take a few minutes. So I'm going to SSH into Gaul. I'm on my home computer here, and I want to make a remote connection into Gaul using SSH. If you're using Linux or Mac OS, then you just need to open up a terminal and type in SSH, whatever your username is, at obelix.gaul.csd.uwo.ca. If you're on Windows, I recommend you use PuTTY to connect to Gaul, but you can use any SSH client that you want. If you're not familiar with connecting to Gaul via SSH on Windows, you can go to the main department website, go to Undergraduate, Current Student Info, click on How To's and Tutorials, scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see various tutorials written by Jeff Schantz. Click on that and you're going to want connecting to Gaul from your Windows computer at home. So if you click that, you'll have everything here that you need to know in order to connect to Gaul via SSH on Windows. All right, so let's SSH into Gaul here. Now, if I type ls, you can see that I've got a few files and directories in here. But if I type ls space dash la, I see a lot more. And that's because there are a lot of hidden files. Now, just a reminder on Linux and Unix, any file name that starts with a dot is hidden from your normal ls output. So the file I'm interested in here is called .tcshrc. Now essentially this is a file containing commands that get executed every time you log into Gaul. And also if you were sitting at a computer on Gaul, it would get executed every time you opened a terminal window. So we're going to take a look at that file. Now in this series, I'm going to use an editor called Vim, which is short for VI Improved. VI is a standard editor that you'll find installed by default on any Linux or Unix system. And again, Vim is just VI Improved. Now you can use any editor that you like, but I strongly recommend taking the time to learn Vim because it's available on every system, whereas other editors like Emacs and Pico may not be. Now granted, it's got a bit of a learning curve and at first it's going to feel a bit unnatural to you, but once you become proficient with it, you'll see that it's a very powerful editor with a whole lot of features that are going to speed up your workflow. So I'm going to type in vim space dot tcshrc and you can see that we have only one line in this file and we're saying that we want to source the file that's located in our home directory. This dollar sign home is an environment variable that always stores the location of our home directory. So we're sourcing the file in our home directory called .cshrc. Now what is sourcing? Well all that essentially means is that it's going to open up that file and it's going to execute all the commands that are contained within it. Now we're not going to be too concerned with what this .cshrc file does. Suffice it to say that every time you log in, this .tcshrc file that we're currently looking at gets executed, and in turn, it executes this .cshrc file, which automatically executes a bunch of commands and gets our shell environment set up for us. Now what we want to do is actually add another file to this file that's going to be executed every time we log in. And this file is going to be the one that contains all of our hacks. So in order to add a line in Vim, I'm going to press O and that's going to open up a new line in what we call insert mode. Vim is a modal editor, meaning that it has a number of different modes that we can be in at any given time. So in order to insert text into the file, we need to be in insert mode. So by pressing O, that put us in insert mode on the next line. It opened us up on the next line. So I'm in insert mode and I'm going to type source dollar sign home forward slash dot and let's call it hacksrc. We'll put all of our hacks in this dot hacksrc file. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to press escape to exit out of insert mode and return to what's called normal mode in Vim. It's important that we source our dot hacksrc file here 
after the .cshrc file because we're, we'll sometimes be adding some things to our hacksrc file that are going to override other things that are set first in the cshrc file. So just make sure that this hacksrc file is sourced after cshrc. Now I should mention, let's say that we made a mistake when we were typing this in. Let's say I accidentally added an extra K here. Uh, in order to delete that, if you try to press backspace when you're in insert mode, you'll see that it doesn't exactly do what you intended it to do. It's actually acting as the delete key. So let me just fix that here. I'm just going to put hacksrc back in there. Now, in order to delete that extraneous K there, I need to press escape to get out of insert mode and go back to normal mode. And using the arrow keys, I'm going to go over to that extra K and I'm going to press X to delete the character that's currently under the cursor. All right, so once we're done entering that, once again, I pressed escape to switch back from insert mode to normal mode. And now that I'm in normal mode, I'm going to save the file and exit by typing colon WQ. That's colon right quit. Now, incidentally, if I wanted to exit without saving my changes, I would type colon Q exclamation mark, which essentially yells at Vim that I want to exit right now. So let's do WQ to save and quit, write and quit our file. And now we've sourced this hacksrc file, but it doesn't actually exist yet, so we need to set it up. So this, again, this is going to be the file that sets up all of our hacks for us automatically every time we log in. And I'm going to type vim dot hacksrc and we get an empty file. So I'm going to press I, which takes me into insert mode, but it keeps me on the current line. Remember before we used O, which took us into insert mode on the next line. So I'm in insert mode here, and this is just a shell script that we're in right now. And in shell scripts, the pound sign is a comment character. So I'm going to add a little comment here. And we'll just say gall hacks to remind us what this file is used for. Now, we don't actually have anything of substance to put in here in this particular episode because we're just getting things set up in this hack. But for now, let's test it out by typing echo. And in double quotes, I'm going to say hello. And then in backticks, the backtick is the key to the left of the one key on your keyboard. And I'll type in who am I? And then I'll put another backtick and another closing double quote here. Now, what these backticks do is they tell the shell to execute the command that's inside of the backticks and then they take the output, whatever this command outputs, this entire block is replaced with that output. So who am I is going to return my username and then this block here will be therefore replaced with my username so that every time I log in it will say hello jshants4. Alright, so once I've typed that in, once again I'm getting out of insert mode by pressing escape and then I'm saving and exiting with colon wq, right quit. So I'm going to log out by typing exit and I will log back in to test this out to make sure it works. And of course you can see that now it greets me when I log in by saying hello and my username. Now let's go back into our hacksrc file vim.hacksrc and I don't actually want it to greet me every time I log in so I'm going to use the arrow keys to put my cursor over this line and I'll press dd to get rid of it. And then once again, I'm just going to say colon WQ to save that. Now you may be wondering, why are we putting all of our hacks in this .hacksrc file? I told you before that we have this .tcshrc file that gets executed every time we log in. So why not put all of our hacks in that file? Well, the reason is that there's a script that if you ever screw up your login environment, if you ever mess up one of your login scripts, you can actually run this script that's in user local bin and it's called reset.login.env. And that will actually reset your .tcshrc file, your .cshrc file, and a bunch of other login scripts. So if we put all of our hacks into our .tcshrc file and then we ran that reset.login.m script it would reset this file just back to this one line and all of our hacks would be gone so by putting our hacks in a separate file if we ever had to run that reset script all we would have to do to get our hacks back would just be again to source our hacksrc file okay so that's the only reason that we're putting it in a separate file all right, that's all we've got today. Again, it's been a boring hack, but we've laid the groundwork to do some cool stuff in future hacks. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.